Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number six of the AP Academy and we're up against Zach and his Chicago Corbinites and it was a really strange matchup, right? So I felt like there was a lot that I had to cover up in this matchup, right? So first of all, he has the G-Max Comparaja, which I know is an absolute monster. He hit a lot of different threats, right? So this is uh, the second time, I believe, in the span of a couple days where I had to face a Gengar Hydreigon combination. Also, the Noctile was coming through this week, but really, there were so many threats that I had to prepare for, right? So he had a Decidueye, a Rhyperior, and a Jolteon, all of which I was kind of afraid of were going to come, but also an Alola Ninetales that I felt like I had to do a lot of prep work around. So my main goal with this Ovali Steel was if I see the Alola Ninetales, to lead with it, try to take out the Alola Ninetales through any type of Aurora Veil shenanigans, and then try to defog that Aurora Veil away. Other than that, with the team that he kind of brought, this Ovali Steel is not in a great position to do a lot, but what is in a great position, because I did not see a Rhyperior, and other than Rhyperior, he really didn't have any type of Electric resists or immunities or anything like that other than Jolteon but that I would have to play around regardless but I felt like it was a really really solid opportunity for a scarfed Rotom that's just max special tag modest it's just as offensive as it can be and just kind of uh, deal damage around his team I have a pretty standard Mudsdale a pretty standard Melmetal I have a really fun uh, Grimmsnarl it's pretty much just max special defensive but uh, when I was running Calx it was really interesting because I could build it in a way that it could take I believe a scarfed Hydreigon hit into a special X Gengar hit, which I thought was really insane. Uh, this mod could just take most hits that you wouldn't reasonably want to go for, and then it just acts as a delete button. It just kills anything that's on the other side of the field. As well as, I had to invest a little bit, but it could actually take a max steel surge from the Comparaja from absolute full, and then it, and then I can get two max knuckles off on the on the steel surge turn and on the following turn to at least start uh, wear down this Comparaja and then come in with something faster. And again do whatever I need to do from there. Uh, it was a really fun Grimmsnarl set that I really felt could do a lot here, just acting as a straight-up delete button against a lot of his bigger threats. And the Inteleon is a pretty standard one. I struggled a lot with the item, right? So I thought a lot about potentially uh, Expert Belt, but I ended up settling on Mystic Water because I thought that that extra little bit of damage would be helpful here. But it was honestly kind of a game-time decision. I really couldn't think of what item Inteleon really needed in this matchup, and I thought Expert Belt would be interesting. But there were a lot of possibilities for mods that he could have brought into this matchup here. But with that, I'm just going to get right into the match. All right, so the match is about to start. And I believe I end up wanting to lead off with a Melmetal. With the six that he brought, it felt like Melmetal was kind of, not expendable, but definitely not the most valuable. Like, it was never going to win an endgame or, like, deal massive, massive dents into his team. But I felt like it could be the best mod to kind of scout out and deal some big early damage and try to get uh, some momentum going for me early on. And he leads off with the Hydreigon, so here I start to worry a lot. I'm thinking a lot about what this could be, right? And I, I ran some calcs, and I believe I could take any single Fire Blast with this Melmetal. I was calcing Life Orb, Scarf, Specs, a lot of different standard Hydreigon variations. And I believe the consensus was I can take any hit from this Hydreigon that isn't specs and i can oko back with double iron bash which i thought was really really tempting and you, you can see i even tried to explore some switching options but i end up staying in he goes for the fire blast and from turn one i'm playing five four but i can confirm that this thing is specs so that's something but um again literally any other set and i believe i just uh ko this thing back with double iron bash and i can take most hits so here i'm really strongly considering going into um this Grim Snarl because uh, it's definitely way too early to G Max. Uh, 0% of me thought that I should uh, start going ham with G Maxes, but I know that this thing is locked into Fire Blast and I know that I'm defensive, so I really didn't want to call this wrong, but there was no way that I thought he would want to stay in here. So I felt like I could deal some chip damage onto whatever wanted to come in while staying reasonably healthy with Drain Punch. Uh, that felt like the best, like, catch all kind of attack here that could. Like I said, just scare him out and then let me reassess what to do after this turn is over because I really don't want anything else to take a, a, a Fire Blast and this is the only mod that I could throw out that would stop him from wanting to just throw out Fire Blasts like, oh gosh dang day. So he does switch into the, in the, into the Milotic, which is uh, pretty darn specially def or physically defensive. And it's tough because I, I also find out that it's Rocky Helm, which of course, because again, Melmetal attracts every bulky water type with rocky helmet th that there is so it's gonna make it impossible for me to ever be net neutral on any kind of drain punches here so i have to switch out i have to figure out what i want to do here but i really don't know what i want to do but again from team preview i knew that this Sovali steel was going to be not the most useful so i kind of 
I tried to throw it out, try to get some um, momentum going, but uh, the fact that it is Rocky Helmet immediately made me fear that it would be competitive. So I really didn't want to throw out any type of parting shot right away. Oh, I, I did also think that Toxic was mildly likely there. So that worked out for me there. But I didn't know what I really could reasonably do with this so violently. I didn't want to give it... Um, boost for free with through competitive and it would have gone to plus three because of the way the parting shot works so i had to just try to deal damage to this thing i didn't i didn't have toxic on this thing either which uh i don't think was ideal but regardless i felt okay enough just trying to get this thing low enough because if I can force this Milotic to kind of take me out in the situation, then um, as long as I can keep attacking this thing and keep it at around half-ish, then my Rotom can come in and do the rest, assuming that it is um, the kind of set that I expect it to be. And on the very first crunch, I get a defense drop and I get hurt by the Rock Mode. But it confirms that it is not competitive. It is in fact Marvel scale, which is huge information for me to know because now I can very freely parting shot out and Obviously, it's, it's doing nothing, so I could tell how uh, how defensive this thing is, but uh, I can't really stay in here. I have to try to parting shot out, uh, which I can do now because I know that it's not competitive. And um, it's not until really this moment where I am uh, looking at my menu where I realize I really don't have the best switches in. Even at minus one, I really don't want anything taking that much damage. And um, my, my Inteleon is really the best candidate here, but it's not dealing any damage back. So... I know that uh, uh, my Lotix Halt is going to do a lot to my Rotom regardless, but I know I can either scare it out or get massive damage on a Volt Switch here. So I figure that's got to be my play, uh, even though I'm taking way much more damage than I would have hoped. And it does a, just a little bit over half. Like, even if I had had a little bit more um, uh, HP investment, I could have maybe dealt with this situation, but basically my Rotom Scarf is meant to outspeed any type of Gengar. Um, I believe that's what I benchmarked for, so I really didn't have any type of room for HP investment unless I started to cut down on my special attack, but then I really hurt my counts against my Lodic. So it was a tough balancing act for this week, but I felt like this was going to work out for me, but uh, regardless, this my Lodic is going to be a problem for me because I really don't have the best options of breaking it. And I believe actually um, the reason why I was Metal Coat on my on my Mel Metal was be was to give myself the option to kind of toxic this thing if I if I um, had the opportunity, which uh, is not gonna ever look great here. But it does mean that I can go into my Sovali, and my Sovali is gonna take hits the best. It's gonna be my really my only option for switching into this thing, um, even after doing a right around half, uh, which is very very solid damage in this situation. But now I can try to figure out something that I could do here I, again. It's never going to look pretty, but um, as long as I can force this thing to want to keep continue to attack me and I can keep it around half-ish, then my Rotom can start doing uh, whatever it needs to do here. So I can just crunch into this uh, Flareon, which does come in, and uh, I really should have done some more counting here to, to know how bulky this Flareon was, but um, it seemed like pretty standard damage to me, and... Uh, I felt like I was just free to kind of parting shot out, um, especially again because this this Sovali, um, I guess my Sovali is now my de facto switch into my Lodic, even though um, it really doesn't do that role great. But uh, keeping this thing up and and being able to to, to pivot around feels really uh, solid to me here. So. Uh, yeah, I, I do just get the parting shot off, even though I really don't have the best um, options for this. But uh, it does reveal not to be guts. Well, it, it can still be guts, but um, but not to be a super offensive like uh, toxic orb set. And it does allow me to go into uh, this Mudsdale here. So I know that this Mudsdale has the opportunity to kind of attract in a lot of stuff, right? Um, and he has options against my Mudsdale, but my main thing here is to just get a Brox, I believe. I believe I do that uh, just on this turn coming up, and uh, just to kind of wear down the team a little bit as, as much as possible, but regardless, um, rocks are going to be the first priority. And then, whatever he wants to bring in on, on this Mudsdale, I'm going to resolve to deal with it, right? Um, obviously, H Hydreigon is a super profitable switch. Um, that will always just... Because uh, I, I would have no reason to body press into this thing, which would be really the best opportunity but also i can get some chip damage onto the mylotic no matter what happens although again uh i really need do need to keep this thing up for the copperaja so 
As much as I really do want want to get more damage onto onto this thing, I, I'm really not in a position to. So I believe this is a moment where I just go into Silvali once again. I think about it. I, I, I definitely think about it. What 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 I want to do here, but um, there's really no play to be made. Oh no, maybe I do talk. I do get off a of toxic here. Um, so yeah, I did. I, I, I do remember predicting this recover. Um, I really did want to switch out, but I thought that would never really get me anywhere here. But uh, I knew he was a position. He was in a position where he had to recover because if he attacked into my my Mudsdale, then that would allow me to get in my my Rotom, and my Rotom is then in a position to kind of take this thing out. So uh, it didn't feel great wanting to stay in here, especially if he did. Um, it just scalded me expecting Rodan to come in or anything else to want to come in, but um, it felt necessary, especially now that my Mudsdale is getting chipped down, and I really need the Mudsdale to healthy in order to be able to deal with a lot of his threats, in particular the Copperaja, because I really don't have the best answers to the Copperaja, and um, Mudsdale is my best candidate at this point. I do switch into 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 Silvali, and I get burned, which is awful in this situation. Um, and to be fair, Savali was never really doing any damage uh, in this exchange, but um, I'd really uh, like to do more than two damage per crunch, right? But uh, that's what we're looking at right now. R regardless, it's not even about the damage per se, and 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 I gave him Marvel Scale. I I I toxic fully knowing that I was going to give him Marvel Scale. It really never mattered because um, none of my mons were equipped to take on. Uh, a, a Marvel scale my load. really the only thing that I could do in this situation is is hope that whenever I get taken out I can bring in Rotom and attempt to revenge it with my Rotom heat and uh, Fun fact. I don't have a Thunderbolt on this set, but After I revealed how much uh, that Volt switch does it does right around half um, He has to respect Thunderbolt enough where I could potentially Thunderbolt and it looks like I would potentially take out So it does somewhat force force a switch out here um, but regardless um I have no other play but to click Volt Switch here, and yeah, I do wish that I had an opportunity to kind of, um, to kind of threaten some more damage with Thunderbolt, but the, but the switch out was also reasonably obvious, so, uh, getting the momentum here was perfectly fine with me. It, I do get to chip down the, the Hydreigon a little bit, and, um, I was running some calcs, I believe, in this moment. I, I believe I take a second just to run some calcs, and I do realize that, um, knowing that this thing is Specs by my... Uh, Intellion is always going to outspeed it, and I believe I put it in range of an Ice Beam from Intellion, from a max, um, from a max special attack timid Intellion. Yeah, I'm I believe I'm still running Calyx, just to be extra super duper sure. But uh, every indication is that I should be able to take this thing out with an Ice Beam reasonably comfortably. I think it, I think it might have been like right around the edge of being a roll, but uh, it, at this point it was something that I kind of had to. Uh, risk in this moment because I really don't have best <laughs> the best answers to most things on this team anymore and I really kind of have to play this um, for damage uh, as much as I can although as much as I really wanted to collect Ice Beam I, I just kind of had this thought in my mind that he would want to switch out here thinking that I could hit this thing hard um I don't know I think it was a very honest 50 50 here it was a true 50 50 here whether or not I, I would ice him into it and 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 he would stay in thinking that he could take one or wh or whatever the case may be or he would switch out and let me u turn on this thing it really felt like a risky play but it felt like a risk that i somewhat had to take but also um i desperately need, need the momentum to get it was just kind of a risk that i had to make it was not one that i felt comfortable with because in most other scenarios, I would I really just wanted to click Ice Beam. I would feel so much less anxiety just clicking Ice Beam and trying to uh, not put myself in, in, in a worse position here. But I do get it right. Um, I do have to take some Rocky Helmet chip, but it is incredibly worth it for this momentum. And the fact that it's weakened that, it's weakened that much um, means that Volt Switch looks like a pretty guaranteed KO from here. And uh, I have no other play. There, uh, If he wants to preserve this thing, then he can, but he's giving me... Uh, pretty darn free momentum, and I can kind of try to figure out what to do from there. Um, but yeah, that was a very anxiety-inducing 50-50 uh, type of play there. And he does bring in the Copperaja, which uh, confused me in, in the moment, but it's totally, totally fair. He knew that I was going to Volt Switch. He, he must have knew that I was going to Volt Switch. But I think he thought that, I that he would take it better. Um, he might have been calcing a less, especially offensive Rotom, because, um, of course, I brought a modest Rotom to 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 a to a match where uh it probably didn't make the most sense but 
Um, this is a moment where I knew that I was able to chip down the Comparaja enough, and then I believe I'm just I'm trying to figure out what the best course of action here is, whether um, any of these mons make more sense than the, than, than the rest. So I'm almost positive that uh, my play would be to go to Mudsdale, but I'm just I believe I'm just trying to uh, see what kind of uh, options I have here. Especially because I would like to get my Grimmsnarl going if I can, but um, at the same time, I would really love to try to make some things happen with my Inteleon, especially if I don't have to burn my my Mudsdale this early. And if anything, I, ha I have to be extremely wary of the fact that he can uh, max overgrowth, and I have to be pretty positive that I can take one max overgrowth. So um, if I if I gave up my, my Mudsdale for nothing, basically, on, on a max overgrowth, then that would be pretty not great for my situation here. But, uh, again, this is kind of the, the the situation that I had to put myself in. And then, um, I believe Earthquake would have done slightly more damage, but I ended up going for the Body Press because, because there was that little niggling risk that he would be able to outspeed me, even though I put a lot of speed into this Mudsdale trying to catch a Copperaja off guard. So... Um, I thought I, I thought about this turn a lot, about this interaction a lot. So even though I really wanted to click Earthquake, uh, the fact that he would get to click Max Overgrowth ahead of me really was a risky play here. But um, that looks like a two KO. That looks right on the borderline of a two KO. So it would have been a risk. But he does hit me with a Max Overgrowth, a Max Overgrowth, which means he's gonna pop my stamina, which means that the next Body Press is 100% going to be able to do it here. Um, so I don't even think about it in this situation. I just, um, click Mighty Press, I believe, as soon as, uh, the opportunity comes. But, uh, I was able to reasonably comfortably take that Max Overgrowth. And now I'm in a position where my Mudsdale can deal with this Comparaja, even though he does get that Max Overgrowth. Um, that Grassy's Terrain boost. Uh, you know, actually, if he, if, um, I didn't get that stamina, then I, that, that, uh, Grassy Terrain, uh, health might have gotten him out of 2 KO range. Uh, that's actually pretty funny. I'm, just, I'm, I'm realizing that just now, but uh, because of that stamina, I'm going to be able to take this out, and I didn't even think about it too much. I just uh, clicked on my move. Um, so, first of all, there's there's a lot going on here, right? So, I was able to somewhat neutralize this, this Comparaja, and I kept um, Steel Spikes off of my side of the field, which uh, felt great to me, right? Like, I I felt really good about being able to manage th this Comparaja as much as I could. Uh, he does sack off my Lodic, so he does have... A decent amount of sacks in the back. Um, obviously, Hydreigon was, was never going to come in. Um, Gengar was reasonably uh, risky here, even if it could pretty easily come in on, on a potential body press. Um, regardless, it, it, it's a double down, and now I'm going to have to figure out what the heck I want to do, but um, this felt like as good a moment as any to try to get my Grimmsnarl going, and I believe that's what I choose to do. Yeah. Um, in retrospect, it might have been slightly better to get my... To get my... Um, to get my Inteleon in here, but I was really kind of scared of a potential Scarf Gengar because um, because the Hydreigon was Scarfed, it made me think more and more that the Gengar could be Scarfed. So, or sorry, because the Hydreigon was Specs, it made me think that the, that, the um, that it could be Scarfed. And so it kind of made me a little bit gun shy, maybe probably more than it needed to in this moment. But I go into Grimmsnarl, and this is kind of what this Grimmsnarl was meant to do. It's meant to take hits and just delete things on, on the other end of the field. So... I I try to click the Dynamax button and and I'm running a, a handful of calcs just trying to figure out um, if if I would screw myself over by going for the G Max news right away or if I had an opportunity to max knuckle get that up and then go for max news and I believe um, what I decided eventually was that um, it, if I G Max knuckle then that gives me an, a, enough extra attack to be able to, to G Max news on the next turn and it and it does and it shouldn't hurt my chances of two at KOing this knock towel. And then from there, I'm, I'm looking at a plus one Grim Snarl that is especially defensive enough to take most of his threats, right? So if he thinks that um, this Noctowl can go down and his Gengar can come in and, and revenge after that, then I should be especially defensive enough to take a hit and ideally be able to manage that. So that's kind of where my head's at. Um, even though I really didn't 100% need the... the uh, max knuckle boost there in order to be able to deal with the the um the Gengar or anything because I believe just uh, I, I believe I, I built this thing to be able to take on uh Gengar with regular max news but 
it felt important in the moment, right? So first of all, he misses a hurricane, which uh, is mildly important because it, it it doesn't allow him the information to people to know um, how specially defensive I am, and it's obviously saves me chip damage onto my Grim Snarl. But it also defogs away the grassy terrain, and I knew that was um, something that he uh, had in his mind because as long as he leaves that on the field, my my Grim Snarl can just passively heal while I'm getting G-Max moves off. So that was definitely something that he wanted that he wanted to manage in that moment. And now this Flareon's in, and I believe in the moment what I thought was he was just bringing this out in order to um, kind of um, stall out more turns of my Gigantamax. But he does go for the Will-O-Wisp, which means that uh, G-Max News is going to do pretty bad damage. I would have KO'd without that Will-O-Wisp. But uh, this is an itemless format. I can't even have like a lumbar or anything. I can't do. I can't have any boosting either. I can't do anything to kind of mitigate that. I just have to eat the will o wisp and try to manage this Flareon now. And um, one thing. Oh, um, I did get that drowsiness, that 50% drowsiness onto that Flareon. So he will be going to sleep um, after this turn is over. So I kind of have to figure out how I want to play this. So even though I am burned, my thinking here is that I can mitigate the burn by. Just getting HP back with the with the Drain Punch, and here he clicks Lava Plume. Uh, just seeing how specially defensive I am. So if I can manage to get the to leave this interaction being reasonably healthy, then at the very least, what this um, Grim Snarl could potentially do is, if I keep this in the back, then it can take a Specs hit that's not Flash Cannon from a from a Hydreigon, and I can hit it back with Sphere Break, which I think even. Uh, it should uh, KO it, e even though I am burned. It is still times four stab. Um, so that's where my head's at. I'm 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 still thinking about how I can pr pres preserve this Grim Snarl to be able to kind of deal with at least some of his threats in the back, like again the um, the the High Dragon potentially. Um, and I believe I only have to stay above maybe like 70-ish percent, even though that's not looking like a possibility now. But I believe I only had to stay above like 70-ish percent in order to take a Specs Flash Cannon. But I've don't 100% remember. That, that might have been Scarf Flash Cannon. That 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 might be what I'm thinking about. But regardless, we're here now, and this Flare Run finally wakes up. It gets a wish off, but I am able to take it out, and um, and it's gonna allow really whatever he wants to come in. Uh, the Gengar is a very likely suspect, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to manage that. But uh, in my head, also, so one other thing, um, I did struggle a lot with with this uh, Grim Snarl set. Um, trying to figure out what the right configuration of moves was, and I really did want to pack Sucker Punch on this on this Grim Snarl, but I realized that once I got Gigantamax, G Max News based off of Darkest Lariat, it uh, had a significant enough power difference over Sucker Punch that it made it kind of worth it. But if I was in a position where I was able to pack Sucker Punch instead of Darkest Lariat, and I, and I don't think it ever really mattered, right? So I think um, I could have played. All of this exactly the same, just with Sucker Punch instead, and I would have still done what I needed to do here. But Sucker Punch would have gotten a very decent amount of chip onto this Gengar, and now it's just a matter of trying to beat uh, the rest of his team with with Rotom Wash and or Rotom Heat and um, Intellion. And I'm trying to figure out how to do this, right? So um, it looks like I just get taken out. And I'm trying to figure out if there's any way that I can make make, make it out of this. I'm, do, I'm running a lot of cows. And I'm thinking that my best opportunity here is hope that this Gengar is not Scarfed. It, it is very possibly Scarfed. But if it is not Scarfed, then my Scarfed Rotom can uh, outspeed it. I can Volt Switch. Out, or maybe I go for Dark Pulse? No. Oh, I go for Overheat. Okay, so I can Overheat. And, um, oh, if I Overheat, then it baits in the Hydreigon to, to KO me. And then... And then Inteleon sh between uh, Ice Beam and a Mystic Water boosted, um, a Mystic Water boosted Scald should be able to take out the Copper Roger. <coughs> so that was what I thought was my path to victory. It turns out um, he is Scarf, so I felt like I had no opportunities here left. So I go for the Shadow Ball. Um, maybe I take one Sludge Wave. I, I, I think it was Kalgan. I think there was a very small chance that I take one, but there was a chance on, nonetheless, um, if, if this thing was, like, super duper offensive, right? So, uh, he goes for the Sludge Wave, and I take it. I take it on six. I go for the Shadow Ball, and 
I am not able to take it out. Now, <laughs> there was a lot of talking um, after the after the match, right? And it turns out that if I had gone with my original plan and I was extra belt um, in Talion, I would have KO'd. And then, like I just mentioned, the Hydreigon gets KO'd by by um, by Ice Beam, and the and the Copperage gets taken out by Scald. And that's gonna be the match. Uh, it was. A really really tough one to lose especially because again even though I was burned sucker punch on my grim snarl which I didn't even realize until watching some footage back today uh, turns out that sucker punch on grim snarl would have also been able to win me the match because it would have like I said meant that meant that Italian was able to take out the Gengar and then from there I can take out the other two with my selection of moves, I wouldn't even have to have an extra belt. So I could either be Sucker Punch and no extra belt, or no Sucker Punch but extra belt. And both were paths to victory that I definitely thought a lot about in team building, but I dropped the ball. I didn't do either. And it was not a great way to lose. I felt that I had the tools. I felt like I built something really fun and interesting, but uh, it's not going to be how this matchup ends. That's going to be week six, though. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. It was a really, really fun match. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the NCP Nimbus, more weeks of the AP Academy. We'll, we will be um, closing out both seasons, I hope, really, really strongly, as well as more weeks of the TBL with Invivid Collar. But uh, once again, that's going to be for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everybody, once again, out.